Hi everyone, this is Lisa Dickinson, Garden Girl at Two Peas in a Bucket. I'm here with this week's Scene Double, the video series where the Garden Girls show you how to get more mileage out of your scrap supplies. Today I'll be incorporating several of the new stickers, tags, and embellishments from Evalicious on both a scrapbook layout and a set of tags. Today I'm working with an assortment of products from Evalicious that are currently available in the two-piece store. I have these large tags and they're three by four. They could be cut apart. There's two of them on the front and two of them on the back. I also have these flare badges from the Escape line and they're mostly in grays and aquas and browns with some cute little icons. These are the Snip Snip labels and they can be cut apart and they just are kind of a generic um, little sentiments that you could use for details on a layout. I also have two sets of puffy stickers that totally remind me of the stickers I used to collect as a child. They're definitely retro. These sets have various cameras and arrows and some travel themed icons like cars and planes. And finally, I have the Everyday Miscellany stickers. These are just circle stickers that peel off the backing. So I'm going to be using bits and pieces from all of these in my two projects. But first up, I'm creating a layout about my son and daughter. To get started, I've printed two photos, one of each of my kiddos, and I've also set up the journaling that I want to include on the page. I printed the photos to match the size of the journaling card, which is 3 by 4 because I'm planning to line them up together and I wanted them all to be the same size. To get the journaling printed on the card, first I measured the space that's available to print on, which is roughly two and a half inches square, and then I set up a text box that same size where I typed in my journaling. I just printed it on a plain sheet of paper, kind of in the center of the page, then I used some temporary adhesive to apply my journaling card to the paper, and then I ran it through the printer a second time to print it on the card. If you have a window in your scrap room, you can put the paper up against it and let the light shine through and then you'll be able to tell exactly where to adhere your card. So that's an easy way to do journaling on pre-printed items. Now that I'm ready to start the layout design, I'm looking at all the colors in these Evalicious supplies, and I'm thinking of pulling most of my colors from these stickers, which have lots of browns and aquas and some green, some grays, they're kind of muted colors. So based on those, I've picked out this gray wood background which is from the October afternoon line First Noel and I just really like how the colors look on top of this gray. It's going to provide a neutral background but it still adds a lot of texture with the wood grain. So as I mentioned earlier, my thought is to line up my photos and journaling across the top part of the page. Just kind of like that. I'm going to put my journaling in the middle and then down in this space I'd like to create a grid of circles. I was kind of inspired by the layout of this sticker sheet just to do rows of different circles where I can incorporate lots of little elements on top of them like the stickers and the flare and possibly some of the little tags. I'll also probably pull in some pattern papers with these things to create a fun embellished grid that will fill the space. I've gone ahead and punched some circles and some scalloped circles using this Fiskars punch and then just a regular circle punch. And these are um, almost two inches wide, just a smidge under. And it worked out that I could fit five circles across and three down. And I selected these pattern papers based on the muted color palette of the Evalicious products. The pinks and greens and aquas, a little bit of yellow. Several of these papers are from the Studio Calico That Away line. This aqua and the gray arrows and then this red to pink ombre. The yellow pattern is an Echo Park paper. And finally I have this lined cream colored paper that is just the B side from the crate bundled up line. I also punched a few from this 6x6 Studio Calico pad and it's the that away line as well so it just has reduced size patterns. 
So I've adhered some things down, my photos and my journaling block, and then this first layer of my grid. And now I'm going to start layering things on top of this base. I think that I will start out with the circle stickers. And I did make sure that this base layer of punch circles were slightly larger than these stickers, just so that they would make a nice border. And they would be able to peek out from underneath. And I'm going to select some of the graphics and colors that work with my page theme, which centers around an outing that I had to the Botanic Gardens with my kids. It was a really fun day and they got along well, which isn't always the case given their age difference because they're almost five years apart. But um, it was a day that just went so well and I, we just enjoyed each other's company and it made me appreciate the time I get to spend with them. And so the journaling is just sharing those feelings. I like the idea of using some of these white stickers to cover up some of the darker pattern papers like this yellow. It kind of ties everything back to my white journaling block. Okay, I think this is looking pretty good. And I think I'm about ready to move on to the next layer. I have cut out a few of these little snip snip tags just out of this sheet. And I'm thinking about using just a portion of them, like this little speech bubble, on one of my circles. So I'm going to cut away the brown border and then just use the tag to decorate part of one of the circles. So you can see I've trimmed this tag just to match the edge of the circle. I'm going to put it there. And I was thinking of using this little banner tag vertically. So I'm just going to trim it out the same way. I really like doing these type of grid layouts because you have all these little small areas to decorate and it's kind of like having a bunch of mini layouts on your page that you get to decorate and embellish and since embellishing is my favorite part of the whole design process I really like these type of designs. So this little pennant is going to go right here. I've trimmed the end off so it'll fit on this circle and it says blank this on there and I'll probably go in and fill that blank in later just so it makes sense. But now I'm going to add some puffy stickers and I'd like to balance out these black spots. So I'm going to grab this black camera and place it maybe there, maybe down there. I'm not sure yet. Let's stick it there for the time being. And then maybe this pink Instagram light camera on the pink circle. And a little gray arrow for the gray circle. I sort of like to use similar color embellishments on each circle so it doesn't start to look too busy. Because you if you have a lot of elements like this grid does, it helps to keep each one somewhat mono monochromatic just so your design doesn't get too chaotic. I kind of want to break up this yellow spot with a bit more white. I think that sticker there will work. I'm noticing on a few of these elements they either look a bit like they're floating in the circle or they're blending into the background and getting lost. So to solve that I have punched out some smaller circles of pattern paper that I just want to tuck in behind them just to set them apart from the background. And this will add another layer of detail and dimension to the grid. And then it also helps frame these little elements so they look intentional and not haphazard. You'll notice that I'm still keeping the color scheme of each circle pretty consistent. Like the pink elements on the pink circle and the gray elements on the gray circles. I think this is looking pretty good, but I do have a few blank spots here. I've kind of been saving these two corner areas to add some personalization, like maybe um, incorporating my kids' names or their initials. And I've got two sets of stamps from Maya Road. They're an alphabet in this uppercase and then a lowercase. And I think I could use the uppercase to stamp their initials 
right up here, and then maybe use the heart and the star from the lowercase set just to embellish them. So I think I'm going to try that stamping, but I'm going to do that off camera so that if I screw up, you don't have to hear me say bad words. And I'm going to do that, and I'll be right back. All right, I've done the stamping, but I'm not gluing them down yet because I did want to show you guys what happened on my first stamping attempt. I originally just stamped one initial, but I didn't like the way it looked because it doesn't really fill the space in the circle. So I just punched out some circles from the same papers, and then I re-stamped my kids' monograms along with the little star and the heart. And I like the way they look much better. So I'm going to use a few little foam squares and adhere them down so they'll cover up my first mistake. You know, it's one of the risks that you take when you stamp on a page. Sometimes it, you mess up or you don't like the way it looks, but usually you can get creative and cover it up so it's not the end of the world. Okay, I think I'm in the home stretch here. One of the spots that I would like to fill in is this little date area. So I'm just going to use my date stamp from Office Max to fill that in. And I almost always stamp my date twice in case it isn't readable the first time. I'd like to put something here just to set off my stamped monograms. And I think some of these shaped paper clips might be just the ticket. This little aqua arrow will kind of help lead the eye into the grid design. So I'm just going to clip it to the edge here. Oops, if it cooperates with me. Slide that on there. And then this white star will kind of help finish the grid off and provide a stopping point for the eye down at this corner. We'll slide that on there. Next, I'd like to fill in this white space since it looks kind of blank. I've got these sequins from Jenny Bolin, so I might try one of these doilies there. But that kind of fills the whole thing. Um, yeah, actually, I like this butterfly better. I'm going to use it to cover up the word receipt that's on the sticker because it really doesn't have anything to do with my page theme. And I think the butterfly's cuter. Then I'm just thinking I'll add a few enamel dots in a couple places. These dots are from Basic Gray, and I'm just going to use them to highlight a few little spots within the grid. I'm going to put a couple of the aqua ones here next to the speech bubble. And of course they're not going to stick because I'm on camera. Ah, there we go. <laughs> And I'm thinking maybe I'll add some pink ones up here in this pink circle. And then maybe just a few yellow ones down here on the yellow date circle. Now the only thing that looks a bit off to me is that my journaling block looks a little bland in comparison to the colorful grid. It's just gray and black and white and I think it needs a tiny bit of color to help connect it to the grid. Maybe if I add a couple of these puffy stickers just up in this white area. I'm going to try this little blue arrow and it'll help lead the eye into the design. And maybe just a couple of pink enamel dots. Yes, I like that. I think that helps fill up that area and just tie the top part of the page into the lower part. So here's a look at the finished product.
My second project is a little tag set. I'm just starting with a basic manila shipping tag and I've also cut some strips from the pattern papers that I used on my layout. I'm going to adhere these strips diagonally across the tag just to make a striped pattern. I like to make tags occasionally, not only for quick layout embellishments, but it's nice to have a few of them on hand just for last minute gift tags or to attach to a bottle of wine as an easy hostess gift. Plus they're really great for using up all those little scraps and bits and pieces that you have after you make a layout. So now that the stripes are adhered, I'm just going to flip my tag over and then trim off the pieces that are hanging over the edge of the tag with my craft knife. To add some texture, I'd like to use my sewing machine to stitch a few rows of zigzag stitches just in between these stripes. I have already done that on this tag over here and I'm not sure how well it will actually show up on this camera but you'll be able to see it in the detail shots. I always love sewing on my scrapbook projects and I definitely use my sewing machine more for that than traditional fabric sewing for sure. So next I'm going to add a small bit of stamping to my tags using this stamp set from Evolicious. It has these little arrow borders in a solid and an outline. I'm going to use the solid one above and below my stripes. And I'm going to be brave and just do this on camera. I'll stamp one up here. And I'm just going to re-ink and stamp another one on the bottom. Okay, not too bad. Now I'm going to grab these leftover stickers and use a few of these to decorate the tags. I like these black ones. I'm just thinking they will provide a nice border around whatever embellishment I add on top of them. And I'm not too worried about the graphics. I think this one says Good Eats, but I'm going to cover them up with a flare button. So I'm just using them more for the color than anything. And I have this little Hello button and this little pink camera, and these are 2P's exclusives, and they will cover up you know what's already there so I'm just gonna grab glue dots and stick these down and then I'll give you a peek at both of the finished tags thanks so much for joining me this week don't forget to check out my challenge and upload a project to the gallery to be eligible to win a two-piece gift certificate and be sure to check out all the Scene Double episodes as well as other video series that are available six days a week at twopeasinabucket.com. See you next time!